this year, air quality has made headlines here in Pittsburgh and around the nation from code orange alerts and wildfire smoke to new proposed standards from the EPA. Natalie Bensvanga is back to talk about local efforts to protect the air that we are breathing in. Thank you for joining us for this very important topic. Yes, thank you for having me. I, I wanted to talk about this because, you know, we're heading into the winter months. Everybody is moving indoors. Right. All of my friends, their kids seem to be continually sick. And I yes, thought me. Yes, I'm constant. Like, what is happening here? Yeah. So I wanted to do a little bit of digging around how we can focus on cleaning the air because we clean our water, right? right? So talking a little bit about this, not only can we deal with things around pollution, but also with COVID mitigation, flu and RSV mitigation as well. Okay. So let's talk about the state of the air report yeah. in this. And this was from 2022, is that yes. right? So Pittsburgh ranked 14th worst metro area. Yes, and that's pretty bad. It is pretty bad and we've improved. So it was uh, PA, Ohio and West Virginia is considered the, the metro area. So we've improved in some spaces, right? But we haven't seen any improvement in where we're talking about particulate matter, which is the, the stuff that maybe you can't see. Mm -hmm. And so microplastics and pollution in our air. And so what's happening is we're, we're in a situation now where we're all moving inside. And according to the EPA, our indoor air quality can be two to five times worse, sometimes a hundred times worse than outside. I'm so glad we're talking about this because, yeah. you know, when we were in the pandemic, there was a lot of stuff that was happening, a lot of yeah. information thrown our way. And there were some things that started to circulate mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm filtering through the air yes, better. Yes. And I think some places started to adopt those practices mm -hmm. while other places did not. So we're we're not yeah. seeing it across the board yet. Well, I'm really hoping to inspire everybody here, especially within our school systems, because this is an area where I think we could see major improvement with air yep. filtration, right? So our average school was built in 1959. That's 55 years ago. So these right. are old buildings, Heather. Right. And the reality is there isn't a lot of great air filtration or air circulation, even cracking windows can make a huge difference because the reality is the reason people get sick in the winter it partly is because the air is drier, which impacts the lining of our lungs and the air particles aren't moving in the air. They stay still, so it's easier to get sick. Well, not to mention the kids will sneeze I mean, right on a device and I mean, then hand it off to the I mean, it's <laughs> it's just in the air. Like exactly. It, they're learning, yeah. you know, behaviors to sneeze into their elbows or cover their cough. Yeah, yeah. And so what I'd really like to see are, you know, places of worship, grocery stores and schools really adopt, you know, air filtration systems in their buildings. And you can actually make your own Corsi Rosenthal uh, air filter for less than $100. Wow. And I'm not going to go into how to do that because that is not my forte, but I did share with Talk Pittsburgh some ways to do it. So if you want to post that, people can learn how to fill it. For That's great. Space. Yeah, we'll make sure to get that information yeah. to people. I also wanted to talk to you about a couple of organizations that yes. are trying to make a difference in this area. You know, it's really important that I think we stay educated and focus on the reality that we have power, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really love GASP. PGH. I highly recommend you follow their Instagram account. They're a watchdog space as well as an advocacy group. And during um, the wildfires in the summer, I was really following them. They they release air reports every single day. And so I was like, should I even wear, I always wear a mask inside, but it's like, should I wear a mask outside? I would check to see how bad the air quality was going to be. And they do that all the time. 365 days a year. So it's really important that we focus on these kinds of things. What about the breath project? Yes. Tell me about that. So the breathe project is oh, breathe. great. Okay. That's okay. The breathe project is great. Um, they're more focused on like policy advocacy. It's a coalition building group. And what I love about them is they're really focused on how can we change things at a government level mm -hmm. to support these kind of layered initiatives, getting HEPA filters into spaces, but also dealing with the petrochemical industry as well, putting an end to fracking or at least mitigating these kind of efforts because we are all breathing the same air. This is not a political issue. This is a we issue. issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And even when you're talking about schools and the length of yeah. time, I know so many Pittsburgh homes. Oh my gosh. Ours, ours was built in 1945. Yes. So there's, you know, there's nothing built in. Yes. To so, really help with filtration. So when you have people over this holiday season, just crack a few windows in your bathroom, in your kitchen, just letting some of that air like circulate, circulate can make yeah. a huge difference in mitigating risk from COVID and everything else so we can all breathe easier. Oh my gosh, I'd like to breathe easier. Those kids you and their germs, I'm telling you, <laughs> won't end. Natalie, thank you so much. Absolutely. And for more information on the two groups you just heard about, you can head to our website. Still to come on Talk Pittsburgh, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my family. I'm I was going to sing it and then I said, meh, we'll wait. We asked how important it is that your loved ones like your romantic partner. Kiki and Kelly are here for the three o'clock drop. That's coming up next.